Hey everybody, today we're going to show you how to install a VESC based controller. In this video, I'm going to be doing it on a flip ski, but this should apply to most VESC based controllers. We're going to go over everything from power input, switches, throttle, hall sensors, phase wires, and everything that you need to get this thing running on your e-bike or PEV build. So without further ado, let's go straight into the video. Now first things first, we're going to go ahead and unbox our controller. Now the one that I have here is the 75100. This is rated for 100 phase amps of power. But the wiring is going to be very similar if you have any other Flipski controller. In fact, they're all going to be labeled exactly the same. There are a lot of options and configurations that you can do with these VESC based controllers. But to keep things simple, we're just going to be showing you the necessities to get this running on your e-bike build. Keep in mind when you're ordering one of these controllers, whether you're getting the Pro or the V2 versions, the Pro V2 is nice because it comes with integrated Bluetooth as well as an integrated on off switch. But here we have the 75100, just the plain old, the, sim the simplest and the cheapest one. And this one's gonna require us to not only use a USB to connect to our laptop in order to configure it, but we're also gonna have to separately buy an anti-spark switch. And this is gonna control the current of the battery going in and out of the controller. Like I said, this one does not come with a built-in switch. So you're gonna have to solder this in place between the battery and the controller. And that way the controller is not always gonna be stuck on. When you're wiring the power cables to the controller, make sure that your anti-spark switch is rated for the current that your controller is going to flow. The one that I have here is made for 300 amps, which is way overkill. And also make sure that your battery connectors are rated for the amps that you're going to pull. An XT60 connector is made for 60 amps. An XT90 connector is made for 90 amps of continuous power and so on. Now onto the phase wires. I decided to use ring terminals because those are the stock connectors on my motor. But if you have something else that you can use, just make sure that it's rated for the current that you're gonna be pushing. Now on my factory controller, it uses an electric lock, AKA a key switch to turn the bike on and off. However, it only uses two pins, whereas the anti-spark switch for my flip ski has three pins. Now what I was able to figure out is that the third pin is simply a ground for the LED that's inside of the flip ski switch. So we're going to go ahead and remove that black wire and only use the two wires that complete the circuit in order to turn the controller on and off. I'm going to go ahead and solder this to the factory connector so that we can use the factory switch on my bike. Now onto our throttle. I'm choosing to use the factory throttle, which means I'm just snipping off the connector from the factory controller. And we're gonna wire this into one of the ADC channels, preferably ADC one channel. And we're gonna use a power and ground from the controller. You have the option to use either 3.3 volts or the five volt power supply. And usually on a throttle connector, it's gonna be red as your power supply, black as your ground and blue, green, or yellow, whatever it may be as your signal. So here on the Flipsy controller, your signal is ADC1, and then you're gonna tap into the other two power and grounds, and that is gonna be your throttle. Now for my hall sensor wires, I've also decided to reuse the factory connectors, and wiring this in is as simple as matching the colors up. You definitely wanna have red and black lined up, but the other three colors, blue, green, and yellow, those don't necessarily have to match up perfectly because again, the controller is gonna learn where these hall sensors are once we do our initial setup. Also, the white wire is gonna be your temperature sensor, which not all motors use. Now, finally, with all those wires connected, you should have everything done to be able to set it up on your bike or PEV and get rolling. We're gonna go ahead and connect this onto my e-bike and then we're gonna do the self-learning procedure. Now, before you start the self-learning procedure, you definitely want to lift up your rear wheel or make sure that your motor isn't connected to anything because during the procedure, it's going to spin up the motor and you don't want to have any accidents. When you turn on the controller, it should light up a little LED on the board itself and that tells you that you're getting power. Now, halfway through filming this video, I decided to upgrade to the larger 75200 controller, and I also went with the Pro V2 version, which has built-in Bluetooth. So you'll see that I'm able to configure this controller using my phone via Bluetooth, which is a really cool feature. 
What you want to do when setting up your controller for the first time is use the motor setup wizard. This is going to spin the wheel forwards, backwards, slowly and fast, and it's going to learn what phase wires and what hall sensor wires are configured to your motor. Once that's done, you're going to have the option to turn the motor into forward or reverse mode. Obviously, you want to make sure that when you hit the throttle that your wheel spins forwards. And then you're going to want to use the throttle setup wizard using the ADC input and you're going to twist the throttle all the way to 100% and then back down to zero. It should set the values for the top and bottom of your throttle range, apply those and you should be ready to ride. So thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe so you can get more content like this and we will see you next time.